Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the United Methodist Church of Westchester. It's great to have you all back here for this kickoff Sunday. Uh, when we get back on with the, the stream of things here, we have lots of announcements because lots of things are starting up and ready to rock and roll. Of course, today is our church picnic. So even if you haven't signed up, we're going to have enough hot dogs and burgers for you. Bring something that you can share with others. That would be helpful too. But even if you can at the last minute, you just want to show up, just show up. It would be great to have you there. That's at Hoops Park. It's over off Downingtown Pike. We, I put a few maps out on the round table if you really have trouble finding it. But uh, most of us do know where Hoops Park is. I hope it can be there for that. Uh, just to let you know, this week we had a really good week. We stopped by the Involvement Fair at Westchester University, and um, we handed out over 500 um, stress balls. We, we didn't call them stress balls. We called them throw it at the head of somebody in your class balls. <coughs> just, uh, you know, kids love that, by the way. The, the students love that. And so uh, we got a long list of students that said they're interested in our church in some way, shape, or form. We'll be in contact with them. Pray that they follow through on their commitments. We'll see how that works out. And yes, we saw Hank. He stopped by. Thank you very much. Several from our church stopped by for that. Um, Molly D. has an announcement about our sub-sale. Yes. Um, Stop Hunger Now is now called Rise Against Hunger. Same program. They've just expanded. We're still going to be doing our meal packaging on Martin Luther King um, Monday in uh, January of 2018. And to help raise the funds, our, we're having our annual sub sale this month. So plan to purchase a sub today or any day during sep or any Sunday during September. Pick up your sub on October the 1st. The subs are great, great quality. Kendra Mancini oversees the making of them, and they're always wonderful. Um, the price is uh, still $5.50 for a 6-inch turkey, Italian, or cheese sub. And just to let you know, last year we packed 35,000 meals. That cost us 10,150. We have in hand or pledged $4,000 so far. So we need you to order some subs. Order for yourself, your family, your friends, and help us raise the money for our meal packaging event in January. Thanks. Very good. Order subs for your office. Take them the next day. They would love that, you know? It'll be a little uh, juicy, but that's fine. Um, notice that we are beginning now in the nominations process, so um, just pray about it during the service today. Think about it. Uh, if you might be interested in serving on one of the several teams that help lead our congregation, we would love to have people that are following the call and are committed uh, to the work of Christ's church. And you can just write alongside your name in the, in the friendship folder coming by, you know, finance team or leadership team or whatever. And uh, we'll make sure we're in touch with you about that. Flood buckets. Last week was Labor Day week then, but still 30 flood buckets left the building and uh, will slowly be coming back. And so we ordered 20 more and we thank Ace Hardware for selling them to us at cost. These flood buckets are over here on the round table. We're certainly going to be using them. They're going to be used through Encore. Uh, the first batch obviously went down to Texas. Another batch will be going now to Florida, all over Florida. So we might do this a couple times this fall because we need to keep restocking the shelves so that when an event happens, we can be right there with that. And we collected over $2,300 last week to give to Encore uh, to help with rebuilding today and in the days to come. So we do have the basket out again if you'd like to give something. If you weren't here last week or even if you were here and you want to give some more, uh, it's again out in the gathering area right near the doors there. And if you haven't picked up a flood bucket, pick one up, take it home, fill it up, and bring it back, and that would be great. Um, there are a number of announcements on our insert to our worship folder. We could use some more people to help out with our Sunshine Memory Cafe, and they actually have a meeting this week, so talk to Molly D. if you'd like to be a part of that. We have a Gun Violence Awareness Day coming up um, that we're doing with several other faith communities in town, but we'll be hosting it here, and that's uh, on September 23rd, as you see listed there. Um, we have a new members class that's going to be meeting this Tuesday night. There's going to be lots of people that are a part of it. So if you'd like to be a part of it as well, let us know ASAP because we buy some pizza. We want to make sure we have a slice for you. And uh, notice our golfer's day coming up, our fall golf outing. All the information is listed there in our worship folder. Something that didn't make it into the bulletin, it probably did somewhere on the small print in the back. Uh, Wednesday night out starts this Wednesday night. So 6 o'clock this Wednesday night, we have a new cook. Uh, Peggy Dillon, looking forward to see what she can do. I think it's chicken picante, so come and see if it's picante enough for you. And um, 
if you'd like to help in any way, you can talk to Janet Bover as well. Just a couple more quick things. A word of farewell to the Frazies. This is your last Sunday, right? You knew that, right? I'm not just pushing you out the door. This is your last Sunday. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, um, the Frazies have been with us for the last few years. They have been a wonderful addition to the life of our church, and we're sorry to see them go, but uh, circumstances are leading them to move to California. So um, they'll be in the air sometime soon. And we thank uh, Kate for all her work with the Stephen Ministry Group here. And she's going to be working with a group out there in Claremont, California, at the United Methodist Church there. And you'll be a blessing to them, I'm sure. And we certainly thank Jerry, Jerry for his years here. He was, you know, a leader in the anniversary team that pulled together all of last year's festivities. We thank you. You've been a blessing to us as well. God's blessings along your way. And God's blessings along the way as well to Anne Sheets. Most of you have heard that Anne died and went home to be with our Lord this past week. Her wishes were that she just had a graveside service. Just a graveside service. And I sent the word out to the prayer link that that would be on this Thursday at St. Mark's Presbyterian Cemetery in Honeybrook. So you have to get your own directions to get there. But St. Mark's Presbyterian Church Cemetery in Honeybrook. Um, and actually, originally it was going to be at 10 a.m. It's been changed to 11. So if you show up at 10, you have an hour to hang out. Uh, but 11 o'clock is when the, the brief graveside service will be. And uh, please keep her and all of her friends here in our congregation uh, in your prayers. And uh, we thank God for a life well lived. Let us prepare to worship the Lord our God in spirit and in truth. to worship. O living God of past and future, we praise you for this present moment. Make us one and make us yours. Amen.
please be seated. Let us come now before God with prayers of confession and knowing that God will receive our prayers and will provide mercy and love for us. We will pray first together and then on our own in silence. Let us pray. God, you know that we have sinned. You know that we have hurt each other, been unkind, and thought only of ourselves. You have given us such grace and mercy. Help us to extend the same to our brothers and sisters. Free us from holding grudges, from gossip, and from passing judgment. Let us never pour shame upon another, but instead love and peace. Thank you for the beauty you will bring to our relationships because we have sought your healing. We are yours, gracious God. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Jesus promises that if two agree and ask, God hears our prayers and grants our requests. Together, let us forgive what is past and ask God to lead us into a future of hope. And as forgiven and reconciled children of God, let us stand and share Christ's peace with each other. Let us pray. Gracious God, help us to listen to your word today. May it give us the courage to answer your call. May it give us the wisdom to ask for your direction. May it give us the purity of heart to love as you have loved us. Amen. Our first scripture this morning is from Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, 
how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. And uh, if you need to write anything alongside of it, like you're interested in something or you'd like more information, just write it in there, uh, new member, if you'd like to be part of the new members class. And could we also have the children come forward for our message for growing Christians? This morning is going to be led by our own Eva Thomas, but we're going to do something different to start off. But, um, oh, something was landing. I don't know what it was. <laughs> Big spaceship was landing. Come on down, guys. Okay. While they're coming down, I'm going to ask for anybody who's a Sunday school teacher here this morning, anybody who's leading one of our small groups, I'm going to ask you in a moment to stand up while the kids are up here. I want us to say our prayer for you together so the kids see uh, everybody that's going to be working with, with Christian education for our church. We have people that committed to all year long help out teaching others about the love of God. So. Uh, we want to recognize them really quickly. So if you're a Sunday school teacher in any of the classrooms, if you're a small group leader, disciple Bible study leader, if you are a member of the um, upper room class and you teach, stand on up if, you know, if you're teaching for a few weeks. If you're a member of the mustard seed class, I think they all take turns teaching. So if you're going to teach in any way, shape, or form this week, please stand up right where you are so we can pray for you and acknowledge you. Please stand up right in your pews. You're not going to have to move anywhere else. You're going to do any teaching at all this year. Love to have you up front. Hi, good morning. Come on down. We have a chair for you. And could we all join together in prayer for our teachers and small group leaders? <laughs> Let us pray. Oh God, your word is like a lamp for our paths. We thank you for the Bible, for these teachers, and for this community of people who want to learn of you. Make us people who cherish and search for truth in a post-truth age. Guide us in our Christian education programs here at the United Methodist Church of Westchester. Help us to be filled with your wisdom and with your spirit so that we might have the power to change the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Um, and if you stay standing for a second, can we show our appreciation to them? Let's have a round of applause. All of our Sunday school teachers, Sunday school teachers. Thank you. Excellent. And you can sit on down. And Eva, it's all yours. Yeah. Either one of these should work for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. it should work. Hello? Yeah, the green light goes on. Is it on? Yeah, yeah. It is. Hello. Yeah. I want to tell you a story about something that happened to me a few months ago. I was driving to the beach, which is always fun, but it's kind of long, and I got really hungry. And then I saw a McDonald's. And there's always great news when you see a McDonald's ahead of you, isn't it? So I pulled in and I gave my order. And when I was behind several cars, like this big white van in front of me, when I got up to the window, the lady said, that car just paid for you. Have a nice day. And she gave me my lunch. And I thought, what in the world? Why would that car pay for my lunch? Why would they, they don't know me? They didn't stick around for me to thank them. Why in the world would they do that? And I thought about it the whole rest of the way to the beach. And I remembered that God talks about kindness and how you don't need to get lots of thank yous for your kindness. If you do it in a small way, that's really God working through you. And I thought, wow, that person was just being kind. And that was God working through me. So I thought, what can I do? I want to pay it forward. I want to be kind to someone else. And I don't want anybody to say thank you or any wonderful things. I just want to do it. So I happened to be at getting gas at the Wawa. And somebody had given $20 to fill their tank. And it came up on the register and they needed a dollar more. And so I just handed it to the clerk. 
and I walked out. And that was my paying forward. Kindness is so important. That is the theme of my library this year, is kindness rocks. Because if we're not kind to each other, what's the, why would we be around each other? What's some of the things you could do to be kind to someone else? What could you do? Any ideas? No one's going to be kind to anyone? Yes. <laughs> what? You could play with somebody at recess who maybe looks lonely. At our school, we have a buddy bench. And someone who doesn't know anyone can sit at the bench, and we'll go over, and we'll sit next to them and play with them. And that's a nice thing. What else? Do you have something? You have buddy bunch? Those are so nice, aren't they? I think maybe you could do things at home, or you could do things at school that are small, that don't take a lot of thought, but before mom and dad have to tell you to do them, right? You could make your bed. You could maybe dust. You could put your books away. Anything you do, even the slightest little thing you do, that's God working through you. I want you to remember this week to be kind, to pay it forward, and be kind to someone else without even thinking about it. And I want you to praise God in everything you do. Can we bow our heads and pray? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the kindness you give us every day. Please help us through this week and to know that you're always with us and for us to be kind to one another in ways we never thought of before. In your name, amen. All right. You may go to what you do. <laughs> go on.
Our second scripture is Psalm 149. We will read responsively. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in its maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with victory. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their couches. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To bond their kings with fetters and their nobles, nobles with chains of iron. To execute on them the judgment decreed. This is the glory for all his faithful ones. Praise the Lord. gospel lesson this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Mike. Another fall is here. It's time to pick back up with things, isn't it? Time to get back to it. Time to re-energize our church as well as re-energize our society. Schools are back in sessions. Happy little students, happy little teachers. Back at it together. Vacations are behind us all, although many of us own vacation homes and may still be watching on the live stream uh, for another few weeks, something like that. 
Teacher meetings are here, and rehearsals and clubs are being joined, and fall sports are back. Friday night football, Saturday football, Sunday football, Monday night football. Yes, it is really possible to get your Eagles fix, even though you're going to the picnic this afternoon, OK? Because there's plenty of other football to be had for you, OK? In the midst of all this rush, my question is, how are you making room for church in your life? Sunday school and small groups that meet, choirs and praise team that, that only have a voice if you and I give voice to them, Wednesday night out, uh, when you can help set up and serve and clean up a meal for the community, for our community, and you can have relaxed fellowship and make new friends and support old friendships around a delicious feast every single week. Good works and food collections and flood buckets to fill and sprouts and youth group and confirmation and picnics and marches. Uh, let's face it, we can see these things as so much busyness or we can see them as so many great opportunities to grow and to serve God. I guess my question is, how do you see church? How do you see church at all in the overall scheme of your life? Why is church important to you at all? That's a question you need to be able to answer if you're going to be able to share that answer with people who are at the very beginning of their faith journeys. Why should we come here on a Sunday morning and maybe several more times during the week fighting the traffic, taking our lives in our hands, crossing High Street, risking parking tickets week after week after week, <laughs> and being asked each week to give our money and to give our time and to give our attention in so many ways. Why? Why do we do this? It's really just for one reason, and one reason only, because this is where Christ is. This is where Christ is. Don't you get it? Don't you feel it? This is where Christ is. This is where Jesus is, not in the building, in the people, among the people. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Jesus is in the heart and in the faces and in the words and in the loving arms of the people surrounding you right now in a way that you cannot experience Jesus by simply reading the Bible yourself or tossing up a quick prayer of your own when you're fishing or when you're on the golf course. Okay? Because Jesus is here when we gather, he shows up when we sing and when we pray and when we read and when we seek and when we love together. This is where the work of God's kingdom always starts. When we worship, the kingdom of God has come nearer than it has ever been before for us. This is the place where God's dreams for us are birthed inside of us. The place where big plans are created and good works are energized and nothing is impossible. The gates of hell themselves cannot resist us when we're together and when Jesus is with us. But as you and I well know, this is also the place where the tension can be, where the tension can build. This is the place where we talk about living in beloved community, but where we discover it is hard to live in beloved community. The place where uh, there is a dyed-in-the-wool Republican praying on our right and the most progressive of progressive Democrats praying on our left and the pushiest person in the world sitting behind us and the laziest person in the world sitting in front of us. And uh, basically all around us are people in very different places on their faith journey, seekers and doubters and wise Christians and folks who have had precious little time of studying the Bible at all. Intellectuals are around us and folks that would rather just do it without even thinking about it, okay? We have people of so many different ages and races and genders and orientations and economic classes and education styles all in this room. Do you realize the United Methodist Church is the single most diverse denomination in all of America? We are the most diverse. That is why we are probably the most split church in all of America, and one of the fastest declining churches in all of America because we're trying to be the church for all people in a day when people who think and live differently gather in their own tribes and hide in their corners and just shout at one another and refuse to listen to one another. It is hard to live in community today. It is hard to live in intense intimate community in the church. That is why so many fall away 
year after year, even long-term members who don't have something go their way, and then they just disappear. It's hard to live in community, and it always has been hard. Even when Jesus walked the earth and physically stood in the midst of his two or three followers, it was hard to live in community. People say and do things that hurt one another. It just happens. That's what human beings do. We sin against one another, which means we miss the mark in even our best relationships. We don't live up to what we need to live up to with our closest friends and family members. And Jesus gave us a process for dealing with our relationships, with our hurtful moments, with the moments we let each other down. A process for communicating and a process for working out feelings. Jesus said, if a sister or brother sins against you, hurts you, go to them. Contact them quietly, one-on-one. -on -one. Talk it through. Your relationship will deepen. You just might regain a sister or a brother or a friendship, and it will definitely grow richer for you if you do. But we all know listening is hard to do, and maybe they won't listen to you, and maybe you might have problems listening to them as well. Folks often get hardened to their attitudes and see the, the other as an opponent, and they're busy trying to defend themselves rather than open themselves up to new ideas, to new information that might come their way. If the one-on-one -on -one session doesn't work. Jesus says involve some other people. Maybe a wise couple of friends, balanced, loving people that everybody trusts. Let them be your witnesses. Let them be your referees as you try to work out forgiveness again. In Judaism, in that day, there's a legal reason for this. In Deuteronomy chapter 19, it says that it takes the witness of two or three people for a charge to be sustained in court. The word of one person against another is never enough. Having others get directly involved protects an individual from kind of unsubstantiated claims and from malicious charges. Today we'd probably say something like, go talk over the issue with your pastor or go to a counselor of some kind, you know, so they can make sure that you're listening to one another and you're not saying words that hurt one another. An objective person who can help you both be more objective while still being deeply in touch with your feelings. If the extra observers don't work, Take it to the church, Jesus says. The whole church is becoming involved anyway when two or three people are upset about something. Let the larger church seek a broader remedy. But even if that doesn't work, if you can't restore that love and friendship and trust into that relationship, if you can't get two parties to see eye to eye with each other and have some degree of respect for each other, there may come a time when you have to loosen the ties, when you have to let the relationship drift apart when you have to let it go. Jesus says the sad words, if the offender refuses to listen to anybody, to their closest friends, to their wisest and most caring leaders, give them space. Lots of space. Stand apart from them and keep moving forward. Let them be like a Gentile or a tax collector to you. You won't be able to have an intimate friendship with them because their heart has become too hard. Their words and their ways have become too harsh for them to continue to live in community with you and with others. Just say hello to them respectfully in the street and keep moving. Relationships matter. That's what this gospel lesson is all about today. Relationships deeply matter. Our words to one another, our actions with one another deeply matter. Our commitment to one another matters. Jesus goes so far as to say what goes on here is going to last. The relationships we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. The relationships we loosen on earth, we will find loosed from heaven. So keep working on forgiveness with one another. Keep building and rebuilding community every fall, every year, every day. I've included a little sheet on forgiveness in your worship folder, it's right in there. Uh, just a little sheet with maybe 10 points to kind of help you work out forgiveness in your own personal relationships. Take it home. Talk these points over with someone you care about, okay? With someone you love. Uh, think about your ability to forgive and your ability to receive forgiveness. Jesus is leading the church, our church, to become experts at forgiveness. We are called to be agents of peace and reconciliation in an angry and warring world. I read of an old army manual, a training manual for non-commissioned officers, uh, where there's some practical advice for sergeants in this manual, it's an older manual, on how to handle the case of two soldiers from the same barracks 
who are arguing with one another. You ever seen that, those of you who have been in the military? Two soldiers, to get mad at each other, and what do you do? They're living in the same barracks. They're arguing with one another. So the sergeant is directed to, quote, align them both to washing the same window. That was a suggestion. Wash the same window. One soldier on the outside, one soldier on the inside. And as they stand there with their cleanest solution in rags, making that same circular motion at each other in the window, they're going to have to look at each other's face. And they're going to see they're doing the same dirty job together, aren't they? And maybe they'll even start smiling and laughing and be able to move on to talk to one another to get things moving out. Uh, basically, they see that, that being together, doing the task together, takes way more precedence over any little petty argument that they could ever possibly have. When we worship, we get a chance to look at each other through the window. When we worship, we get a chance to look at ourselves through God's mirror. When we pray our prayer of confession, we remember that we are all just broken, sinful people looking for help, looking for a new way of living each day. When we gather around the communion table, we see that we are all just hungry beggars, all searching for bread. Remember the bread and the cup. Remember that Jesus poured out his love, his blood for us and came in the flesh and taught us and loved and sacrificed himself for us. For us, not for you. Not for me. For us. With Jesus in our midst, there is no us and them. Only us, okay? Only us. With Jesus leading us, we'll have love even for the Gentiles and even for the tax collectors who have floated from our midst and are at a distance. They will always be a part of us. Let's pray that God gives us a heart to keep living as us. Um, we're going to pray together, and I, we're going to begin with the prayer that I've listed in the worship folder, and then I'll continue us in prayer. So um, let's pray together. Eternal light, shine into our hearts. Eternal goodness, deliver us from evil. Eternal power, be our support. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal pity, have mercy upon us that with all our heart and mind and soul and strength, we may seek thy face and be brought by thy infinite mercy to thy holy presence through Jesus Christ our Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us with your love, with your forgiveness, with your mercy, with your kindness, and with your peace, that we may have it to share with others. Give us a heart for all those who are on our prayer list and our long-term prayer list, we bring before you now in the silence of our hearts somebody that we know is in a conflict either with us or within our families or within our church family. We bring them before you in silence and we ask that you would move, that something new would happen, that a seed of reconciliation would be planted and that love and trust and respect would begin to grow again. Dear God, through the blood of Christ, you reconciled us to yourself. Give us the strength to reconcile ourselves to one another. Bless those who need your blessing. Strengthen those whose bodies are ailing. Give guidance and direction to those who are in transition, those who may be going through times of confusion. Help those who are without work look for work and find work that is wholesome and that will meet their needs. For those going through times of bereavement, Send your deep peace. Send your hope for a future when we all will be reunited, reunited around your throne. And come, Holy Spirit, this fall to fill our church with new wonders, new dreams, and new possibilities. To the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray as a family, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
Um, just a reminder, I forgot to mention it uh, at the beginning of the service, uh, Deacon Alan Keller is not with us this morning because he is assisting the bishop at a celebration or actually a memorial of the Latimer Mines Massacre. I don't know if that's on your radar screen historically.